On this episode of the Skinny Vodcast, first, we'll bring you the top five stories of 2011. Then we talk about needle safety and what you can do to avoid getting poked. And we'll introduce you to a dermatologist who's writing murder mystery novels involving dermatologists. And finally, contributing dermatologist Dr. Lily Talakub talks about the advice she gives to patients when it comes to anti-aging products. Welcome to our dermatology show, The Skinny Vodcast. I'm Amy Pfeiffer. And I'm Terry Rudd. Let's start with the top five stories of 2011. Ranking fifth was our story about two monoclonal antibody therapies that are used to treat psoriasis. Turns out, ustekinumab and briakinumab can potentially increase the risk for cardiovascular events. At number four came a story about technologies that can change the future of hair restoration. We're talking about robotic hair transfers and even hair cloning. The number three story of last year was about the acne drug doxycycline and its potential link to inflammatory bowel disease. The second most read story of the year was on the topical solution bimetoprost and how it could be used as a treatment for localized and stable vitiligo. And drumroll please, of all the drugs, a story about marijuana took the top spot as the most read story of 2011. It turns out marijuana allergies are more common than we thought. On to our next story. So here's a fact of life. When you're a health provider, you're at risk of getting poked by a needle. There are more than 600,000 needle sticks a year among people who work in healthcare settings. And not surprisingly, medical students and residents are pretty susceptible to getting stuck. To get a better understanding of the risks and solutions to this problem, reporter Nassim Miller caught up with Dr. Joseph Sabanko, who has studied the topic. It's important to recognize that we have to train our residents um, and, and all of our healthcare workers that, that work with us that standard precautions need to be done. So gloves need to be worn when contacting a patient. Uh, masks need to be worn. And it's important to recognize that glasses may not be adequate. Um, there have been studies to show that just modern spectacles don't properly protect uh, from eucalyptus splashes. So chin to, to eye uh, masks are important to wear. About 40% of exposures occur either after use of a, of a device or during disposal. So the, recognizing the fact that when you're disposing of sharps, um, that is also a, a, a potential uh, area where uh, exposures can occur. So making sure to keep a clean tray and ensuring that when you're picking up sharps on the tray and disposing of them, it's done in a safe way where you're not physically picking up the sharps with your hand, potentially doing it with instruments or use of um, uh, sheath needles and other uh, protective devices are very important in uh, preventing needle sticks. Dermatology is a very unique field in that we balance the medical and the surgical. And so uh, many of our residents who come in um, may not feel as comfortable uh, as we would think in, in performing these procedures. So dedicating special time to ensuring that they're practicing safe technique, standard precautions is, is very important. Speaking of needles, what happens when you mix tattoos, murders, and dermatologists? You get a murder mystery novel, and the author happens to be a Florida dermatologist. Our reporter, Damian McNamara, spoke to Dr. Terry Cronin about his Sunshine State trilogy. Every dermatologist is always uh, asking their patients questions and trying to deduce what the problem is, what their skin problem is. Many times they'll ask questions like, what have you been applying to your skin? What have you been exposed to? Have you been working with certain plants? Have you been working with certain chemicals? All these questions are very much like a detective would ask, and so every day a dermatologist is a detective. So it wasn't a hard stretch to have a dermatologist become a, uh, a detective in a, in a hard-boiled crime novel. And uh, the skin investigator uh, is about a dermatologist named Harry Poe who helps the Miami police solve a crime involving uh, tattoos and illicit cosmetic surgery. All right, let's move on to the cosmetic counter. Dr. Lily Talakub offers tips on how to discuss anti-aging products with your patients. One of the most prominent questions in my practice is, which anti-aging cream should I use or do I need an anti-aging cream? There are so many products on the market that both doctors and patients are confused about what to buy. The lifting, the sculpting, the firming, the antioxidant creams out there, whether it's day cream, night cream, eye cream, can be so confusing to our consumers and our patients. Essentially, all anti-aging creams are about the same. All of them contain a, a formulation of a moisturizer. They are all moisturizers. Whether it's a cream, a lotion, or a serum, they all provide moisturizing or soothing benefits to the skin. These products all have a miracle ingredient that every month comes out that is supposed to cure the anti-aging saga. 
none of which actually really works. Most of the anti-aging products out there aren't in high enough concentrations to provide any added benefit to the skin. The moisturizer itself or the base of these anti-aging regimens sometimes are creamier, thicker, or richer, which which is the cost difference between them, however, none of which actually is really different. So when choosing the anti-aging regimen or telling your patients what to use for their skin, the, three, the four things you should think about is using one with a sunscreen, using one with time-tested ingredients such as retinol or vitamin C, and using one that's non-irritating, that doesn't contain irritating ingredients on their skin. Otherwise, almost all of them are almost exactly the same. Well, that's it for us. Make sure to visit skinandallergynews.com for the latest dermatology news. And we've got a free iPhone app. Search for Skin and Allergy News in the App Store. Thanks for watching and see you next month.